Thank you for joining us today as we explore several of the options available for Uniprint environments as we look to the future. We'll dive into what each of those architectures look like and share best practices for those considering a transition to a virtualized environment. Presenting all of this exciting information is Ben Bowen, National Sales Manager here at Pharos, as well as Rich Post, a solutions architect and one of the stars on our YouTube channel. So we have a couple of polls sprinkled throughout today's event. Our polling questions are a way for us to gain additional insight and direction from our customers and partners. So I encourage you to participate when you see those pop up. And if any questions come to mind, please type them into the questions area. If we don't have time to answer them live, we will respond when we follow up with an email with a link to the recording of today's webinar. And also, we will be raffling off a two-hour site review with Rich um, to an attendee who has joined us today. So you are all entered just for being here, and then your chances increase as you participate in polls or ask questions. So that's all the housekeeping I needed to do. So Ben and Rich, I'm gonna turn my webcam off and I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Lindsay. Great, thanks, Lindsay. And welcome everybody. Thanks for finding a little time in your day to spend you know, the next little bit with, with Rich and I. Um, hopefully we won't keep it too dull for you. And just, just one note on, um, on the giveaway, I know most of you out there love Rich, but if for any reason you want to sub him out, just you call me and let me know, all right? Um, so we'll jump right into it today. Sorry, Rich, couldn't avoid that one. <laughs> um, all right, so so we'll start with a little walk down, down memory lane here. For those of you that don't know, uh, Ferris was founded in 1992 by Paul Reddy and Jeff Shaw, our two founders. They are still with the company today and, and, and lead some of the, the research projects and innovation that we come up with. Uh, but in 92, they created the first cost recovery program that was available for higher education. They did this for the University of Auckland uh, down in New Zealand. And you know, since that time when we, when we created that first product, uh, we, we've had a long roadmap since then. You know, the product has been ever evolving. It, it, it is not anything near what it was back in 1992. Um, we've had a lot of innovation along the way and a lot of firsts as we've gone along. So if you look at what we've just shown up on the screen, you know, first into paper print, first into job accounting at the enterprise level down to the end user, first for some pull print technology, first for some mobile applications and, and first to a multi-tenanted cloud. Um, and we continue to innovate today. So when we look at the path that we're on, as organizations, and we see the whole industry for that, that matter, uh, move towards as a service for everything. Uh, cloud is a must. So yes, we do have some cloud technologies available, um, some private hosted, some multi-tenanted public cloud. Uh, but with that, what we want you to make sure that, that all of you understand out there is that we're, um, going to continue to innovate in this higher education space, whether you're on-prem or you're in the cloud. Um, we're committed to the space. We're committed to sticking around. So you know, if you want to remain on-prem, you absolutely can. If you want to move to the cloud, you absolutely can. And we've got options for all of that. As the products come along and what we've done, you know, over last, it's, it's almost approaching 30 years at this point with the product, um, Uniprint remains the most comprehensive, the most robust, the most scalable, I think the most flexible and customizable print management application in the higher education space. Um, you know, that's told by uh, the, the numerous small customers that we have out there, you know, student en enrollment, less than 2,000 students, all the way up to the very largest universities that have over 100,000 FTEs. Um, and, and with Pharos having over 65% of campuses that have 10,000 FTE or greater, you know, that speaks volumes to the scalability and the customizability and, and, and ultimately the reliability of the solution itself. So Uniprint's gonna be at our core of the conversation today and what some of the options around it are. For those of you that have used it for some time or just getting familiar with it, you know um, the, the core of Uniprint is around charging and chargeback. You know, both in the student environment and quotas and paper print and billing integration with one card solution management, but then also what we call the back office where you have faculty staff and maybe you have some multi-tiered or, you know, multiple cost centers to charge back and, and, and account for back there. 
Uh, the solution also handles guest user workflow, so that third bucket in higher education where you have transient users who probably aren't part of your domain. And then in all of this, what the product understands is you have your student population who has one set of parameters and requirements, your faculty and staff who have another set, and then your transient users who have their own unique requirements. And the solution is scalable and flexible to serve all three of those. So in that, in that path, you know, we have introduced touchless printing into, into the equation. This is an add-on to the mobility printing that we've always had or introduced into Uniprint. I think that was around 2012 or 2013, Rich, if I remember when mobile print first, first came along. Um, as a result of COVID, we, we've added some touchless printing enhancements to the product. Uh, we're trying to make mobility print a little seamless and easier. So as we innovate and continue with the product, and I think we've got you know, the next version of Uniprint coming in 2021, which will be version 9.2, we'll look at some enhancements to how do we how do we allow you know print jobs submitted submitted natively from handheld so you can use like your air print button and things like that. But as we go along, some of the other things that we're doing, and we've got some cool features coming in 9.2, you know, the roadmap and the and what's coming in the product is probably a discussion for another day. But a sneak peek into some of it is a, a common UI or experience cross-platform, multi-vendor. So if you have our integrated solutions, um, our IMFPs is what we call them, and you have you know different manufacturers out there in your fleet, the look and feel and the experience of Uniprints is going to be the same cross-platform. So whether you're on an MFD or you're on a computer and a desktop, you're on a laptop, you're on a smartphone or a tablet, the user interface is all going to be the same. And what we've done over time is make sure that everything becomes fully web enabled um, is another thing that we've done. So just a quick brief history on the product, where we've been, where we've come, what's happening. The crux of the conversation today is really going to be right here. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is if you have Uniprint um, and you host that on premise, you can stay there. Um, if you want to lift and shift that application to a private hosted cloud, you have the ability to do that. So we'll talk through what does that look like and what does that mean? How does it get done and how does it change the architecture and how does it impact the end users? We'll look at that a little bit. And then as you progress along the path to the cloud, we'll look at what does true cloud mean? Um, private hosted versus public tenanted are two very different things when it comes to cloud. Um, there are NIST standards around what true cloud actually is. So we'll review some of that. But the goal here today is to say, hey, look, if you want to stay on Uniprint, you're, you're welcome to. We don't plan to end of life the product anytime soon. We're going to continue to advance and innovate that product. If you want to stay on-prem within your firewall with that product, you know, whether it is a, 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 a virtual server or it is an iron box server, you're welcome to do that. If you want to take a look at some of the advantages of moving that to a private hosted cloud, we'll take a look at that. Um, but it's really to say, if you want to stay on Uniprint, we're committed to the space, we're committed to higher education, we're not going anywhere. But if you do have cloud migration strategies or as a service strategy, we have a path to get you there. So the point of today is to review each one of these individually, show you a little bit about what that architecture looks like, and then let you know that no matter where you're on, where you are on this path, we can meet you. So if you're going to be on-prem for another five years, fine, we can meet you there. If you're moving to the cloud quickly and rapidly, we can meet you there as well. Um, this is just to showcase where you are, where you can be, and, and where we can kind of help you on that journey. So with that, we'll dive right into the details. And where we're going to start is in the on-premise world. So this is traditional Uniprint, you know, going back all the way to when we first started the platform in 1992. It is a server-based application. It's predominantly always been on-premise. So at a very high level, what that means is within your firewall, you have an application server that we typically call the principal server. You've got a SQL database where we publish what we, what we see happen. And then you have some supporting servers, whether they're print servers for parking jobs for secure print or they're mobile print servers to provide that service. Um, you probably have some additional servers. Um, and then you have your users who are putting jobs into the system, and then your devices that are connected so users can get their jobs out of the system. And with that, I'll turn this over to Rich to kind of go in detail about, you know, what are some of the different options that we have for on-premise architecture and setup? Rich? 
Yeah, so, so once again, just to reiterate, you know, Ben's statement that, you know, Pharos is committed to our higher education library and other customers that are util utilizing uh, Uniprint. And um, we want to meet you where your requirements uh, are bringing you. So a lot of customers are moving to the cloud. Uh, they're utilizing, you know, Box, 365, all the different types of cloud environments. And um, they're asking us, you know, how do we make our print services also cloud available, more highly available? Um, how do we take some of that infrastructure off our plate? Um, and so thank you, Ben, for, uh, for showing this very simplistic diagram. Uh, but I want to show you what Uniprint really looks like. And, uh, you know, this next slide here is uh, from our implementation and planning guide. And it shows all of our communications between all of the different components of the product. And um, so most organizations will sort of shove most of their servers in a server zone or application zone, and they don't have to worry about every single one of these lines. But um, just to show you, if you really were separating the product into its individual components, uh, this is the communication that needs to happen in order for the product to be successful, to do what it does already inside your environments. Um, so this, this is available for you in our documentation. Um, Next, we want to talk to you about a couple of different types of layouts of what I've seen in architecting um, Uniprint for different customers that have different requirements. And this is all even pre-cloud. Um, a lot of times we'll have an organization that's got, you know, billing or funds or something like that, and they'll put that behind the firewall. And then they've got their regular, because that's super secure. Then they've got their server environment. Um, which contains all the servers, so the principal server and the print server and mobile print, and that's where all of that exists. And then they sometimes have requirements to, um, you know, have connectivity to the internet. So for things like the My Print Center and things like that. And so this is the most simplistic view of that kind of an environment for, you know, sites that have, let's say, you know, 30 or less type, uh, I'm sorry, like 40 or less printers or so. Um, but then we find organizations and environments in which they want to separate some things. So in the next slide, we see one where it says, okay, we're taking the same environment, but we, we have that outward facing um, My Print Center that, that is faced to the internet or to the wireless uh, intranet. And that's pretty open. And, um, you know, we want to limit our liability and our risk uh, to that environment. So they separate it to a separate server. So again, we're still talking about a same you know, medium-sized sort of organization, and now you've already have three servers uh, involved in managing your environment, three sets of infrastructure. Uh, the next one shows the same sort of environment, but with SQL being separate. So some organizations like to have their SQL centralized, and they may have a group that manages that, and all the databases are on the same server. Um, so that server probably already exists, but it is part of your infrastructure that is needed for your print environment. And then the last one just says, okay, what if we take both of those and put those into the environment? So now you have four servers all running a small to medium-sized print application. Um, so with that, I'll let, I'll let you bring it back to the simple side of things, Ben, and uh, take it away. Yeah, great. Thanks, Rich. So why we run through that and what we want to make sure that's understood and is important here is if you have an on-prem application and you know, this could be Uniprint or it could be something else. For, for most of you Uniprint administrators who are on the phone today, I'm sure Uniprint's not the only application that you have responsibility for. So with an on-prem application, you as the customer become responsible for the data center and the physical servers, whether they're, on, they're, they're, they're uh, iron servers or virtualized, you have to keep them up and available in disaster recovery strategies. You have to keep the operating system up to date. You have to keep the application up to date and on the latest version. And then you have to have, you know, security and antivirus and monitoring solutions for all of that. So you've all had calls, you know, late night, early morning where a service is down and a server needs to be restarted. And it's somebody's responsibility to get out of bed at three in the morning and go do that. So with all the things on the left here in this first scenario, you know, you, you got a lot of balls in the air. You're, you're juggling fire is what we like to say, right? And with all of this comes time, energy, IT support, and most importantly, cost, right? There is cost sunk into each one of these line items. So if you're on-prem, this is kind of what you're dealing with today. So when we look at private hosted, 
And as we continue along, you know, our, our mountain climber line here, we're now in the middle where we take some of this infrastructure and we lift and shift it. The benefit of that we'll get to here in a little bit. But again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to Rich to say, um, you know, we've had customers who have successfully lifted and shifted Uniprint to a private hosted cloud. And again, private hosted, what that's going to mean is um, your organization, your school, your university, your college, you have procured your own cloud space. So you've got space in AWS or Azure or IBM or whatever cloud service you're using or whatever provider, um, and you're just shifting the application over there. So Rich, I'll pass it back over to you to kind of go through what some of the architecture here for private hosted Uniprint would look like. Sure, so in the next slide, the simplest uh, kind of overview of it all is you can take your SQL database and or your, your application or principal server and move that up to the cloud um, and have that running in an EC2 or an Azure environment or whatever your provider may be. Um, and that's sort of the simplest way to go about it and leaving the print servers inside your environment. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that with the, with the other way of doing it. Uh, but here's a quick example on this next slide that shows, you know, this is how it, this would actually be set up inside an environment and where you have, you have your, your AWS cloud stuff here on the left <clears throat> with your SQL server, your principal server, maybe mobile print and print center web. Um, and then you have internet functions perhaps. So if you have, if you're doing um, Office 365 mail or Gmail or anything like that, that your mail server is going to be in the internet and PayPal or credit card transactions, those kinds of things will be also uh, to another provider in the internet. And then your main campus and remote campus, this is where your activity would be happening on premises. So the print servers you can see have not been lifted and shifted. Um, and the reason for that is because inside your campus, all of your clients or your workstations, your labs and classrooms, et cetera, um, need to be able to hit that print server and submit jobs. And those print servers need access and connectivity to every printer device that's in your environment to print those jobs. And so by moving that to the internet, we're gonna see that in just a minute, by moving that to the cloud, you, uh, you, could, you potentially open yourself up to some security stuff that you have to mitigate. And so the other way of doing that, so that's the more simple way of going about it, which is splitting up the infrastructure with a hybrid uh, private hosted. Uh, but when you lift all the print servers up to the cloud, now you could see those arrows up and down. Now your print servers need more connectivity uh, from the cloud to your environment locally. So it's like having to do two data centers, but in this case, one data center isn't yours and it's traveling over the internet. So the reason um, what we need to look at that then is on the next slide, in order to encapsulate that traffic and keep it safe, uh, the way that that's done, and these last two slides that you saw of, uh, of actual cu our customer sites uh, with the names removed to protect the innocent. And, um, but what we're doing in this phase two for them, because phase one, they wanted to get the application server and database off their environment and in the cloud. And phase two, they wanted to move their print servers, but they actually noticed that, you know, it was going to be, you know, a, a bigger lift to move the print servers and to have all these VPN tunnels and things like that uh, to go between uh, workstations, the print servers, and the and the printers themselves. So that's kind of what that diagram is looking like there, um, and a little bit of additional complexity that again is on your plate when you don't have a more true um, software as a service type solution like Beacon. But the, some customers are not yet ready to get there. And um, we actually had another webinar in which we discussed, you know, where Uniprint and Beacon fit and how they fit together. And um, we're here to sort of let you know that, you know, this webinar is really all about our support for Uniprint in whatever scenario, whatever environmental uh, setup you find yourself in. Uh, but do go check out that other webinar if you've not, uh, if you were unable to join us with it for when it was originally uh, produced uh, to see the caveats and all of the, um, the nuances to Uniprint plus Beacon and why it's such a benefit to have the two, which we might go into a little bit later, Ben. That's right, Rich. And thanks for that. Thanks for the overview. So when we look at 
private hosting. And I think, um, I think Rich, one of the things that I've seen, whether you choose to put your print servers inside your firewall or put them into your private hosted cloud instance, um, there's considerations around job traffic as well. Do you want all your print jobs? If you're doing secure release or secure print where you're parking a job at the server level, do you want that job traffic to stay within your firewall? Um, or are you okay with that going out to a cloud service and then coming back down to the printer? Obviously in the second scenario, we want good connectivity, we want good bandwidth so that we don't have latency at the device for the end user. Because the last thing we want is them standing there saying, hey, I tapped my badge and nothing's happening. Right, so we just yeah, want to. In fact, Ben, we, we actually had a question come in about that uh, for this webinar. Was around, you know, what are some of those things to consider? And really, it is like you said, the network, the bandwidth, the latency, the uh, the capability and overhead on the network. Um, but then there's also some environmental things about risk and liability. Like, do you want your job going out, uh, you know, to another site or not? And so even with our Beacon Cloud, we have the capability to keep things on-premise. But I think we're going to get into that later as well. That's right. So when we look at private hosting options, you know, you do have options here as well. Um, option one is your private hosting your instance, right? So this is private hosted by the customer. This is your school or college or university has gone out and procured cloud space. You have space in AWS or Azure or something like that and you can you know spin up some servers in that space and lift and shift uniprint up into your own private cloud so and as rich pointed out you can do in application only lift and shift where you're taking principal server and sql database and moving it up there or you can take those servers that we talked about that support um uniprint like print servers that park jobs for secure printing like the mobile print server and lift and shift that as well so we've had customers who have done each one of these successfully. And it really, you know, if you have a strategy to, to get rid of some of the infrastructure that you have to move towards a cloud service, um, or if your organization has procured, you know, some decent space in this private hosting world, and you're tasked with moving applications up there, we can do it really either way. The other option in the private hosting is private hosted by a vendor. So this would mean rather than you procuring cloud space, you're going to outsource that space to somebody else. Uh, we have a partner who's doing this for us right now. So if you wanted to take, if you said, hey, you know what, we're, we're, we're not interested in buying or paying for our own cloud service. We want to offload this. We want to outsource it. We want somebody else to manage and take care of it. You have options there. And what we have up on the screen for the alternate hosted, what this means is, um, a vendor is providing you the space to lift and shift your Uniprint application to that space and leave it there. In that scenario, you're still gonna be responsible for the application, you're still gonna be the administrator, you'll do your daily ad move change, that kind of thing. You'll perform the, the software updates to Uniprint when they're needed. Um, and then the second option is gonna be what we call alternate hosted, but also alternate managed. And this is when you outsource everything. You say, you know what, I need Uniprint, I wanna run it because Quotas and pay for print and chargeback are important to me, but I just want to be hands off with it. I want somebody else to administer it for me. I want someone else to, to host the architecture for me. I, I want this as a service, but uh, I'm going to use a vendor to provide Uniprint as a private hosted. And that's an option as well. So if, if either one of these options you know, are, are something that would be attractive, if you're sitting there on-prem today and you say, man, I'd really like to get Uniprint into one of these two options, um, I think, you know, our, our teams here, our account teams, um, our, our folks like Rich, our client services, our folks will, will be happy to pick up that conversation and kind of see what's possible and, and where you may be able to go. When we look at what's the impact or why would people go to private hosting, well, all of your responsibility here on the left-hand side, you're basically handing that off to somebody else. So if you look at the yellow here where it says service provider, if you're doing applications privately hosted, you're handing off the, the data center and the servers themselves and having to provide high availability or disaster recovery for those services. You're taking advantage of a service like AWS that probably has far better high availability and disaster recovery built in than you could ever do on your own. So you're taking some of the time and the energy and the cost associated with supporting the environment and letting somebody else do that for you. So in this scenario, if we, we call that infrastructure as a service. That's the I. AAS at the bottom, um, 
now you're in a scenario where you got a couple of balls in the air. It's not as much to manage as it was before. So with that, hopefully comes some time savings, some cost savings, and, and some other benefits as you move. What we want to discuss, and this is kind of what Rich hinted at uh, where we were headed with this, is the, the next two options as we move down the path. And if you remember our diagram here, we're slowly moving up this path. We've talked about being on-prem. We've talked about being private hosted. The next piece is going to be True Cloud. And before we get there, we're going to get to True Cloud. We'll talk about that too. We have this hybrid environment. And what the hybrid environment looks like is you have Uniprint running, but then in addition, you have a True Cloud service like Beacon running. And some of you may be saying, well, why would I do that? And why would I ever want to run two applications? And, and what's the benefit there? Um, with where we are with Uniprint, Uniprint is providing your quotas, your complex chargeback, your integration into billing systems like Transact and Seaboard and Atrium, um, and then customizations and multi-tier chargeback. So if you've got you know, a shared device that multiple departments use, or I'm a user and I have you know, four different departments and I gotta be able to allocate activity to each one of those, we've gotta place you on Uniprint. That, that chargeback and the complexity around it and the integrations has not made its way into our cloud product beacon yet. So if you need uh, paper print or quotas or multi-tiered complex chargeback, you have to be in Uniprint right now. Um, but why would you go and add Beacon on top of that? Well, let's explore that just a little bit here. So when we look at higher education, we have public programs. These are your students and these are your transient users. And typically their activity happens in classrooms and computer labs, the residence halls or the dormitories, and then the libraries. And the libraries will typically serve um, you know, your transient users. So you've got students and transient users here. And we also have private programs, what we call in higher education. And this is more, you know, faculty and staff where maybe they have a printer within a department, you have a printer within a department and only faculty and staff use it and only one department uses it. So what happens there is you read the meter at the end of the time bound period and that department gets charged for the activity, okay? When we look at where Uniprint fits in this, Uniprint's going to bring in things like banking integration and paper print and cost accounting, support guest users. Um, if you're doing secure printing, we're enhancing device security, we're providing high availability, secure pull printing, document security, um, and user-based analytics. And so this will typically serve predominantly your public programs, but sometimes also your private programs. We do have some customers who put Uniprint out to all faculty and staff. We have other customers who say, hey, I've got a handful of shared devices. You know, uh, five different departments use this shared device and I just wanna charge back the departments appropriately. So let's put Uniprint on those five devices just so that we can allocate charge back appropriately. So when we do that, what happens is, maybe we have all of the public program on Uniprint and maybe we have some of the private stuff on Uniprint as we've just described. That environment with what in Uniprint's introduced for, there's typically an environmental impact, right? We're reducing the waste, how much, how much paper shows up in those blue bins. We're enhancing security with things like pull printing. We're increasing productivity by giving things like mobility printing and, and singular you know, global print queues where I can go pick a job up anywhere. And then hopefully through all of that, you achieve some kind of financial savings, right? That's the end game. You have to have some form of ROI coming back. Um, and Uniprint's typically what's providing that service to your end users. When we look at the unmanaged environments and what we consider the back office, faculty and staff, and this is gonna be areas where Uniprint's not deployed today, what's gonna happen most of the time is you have direct print scenarios. So in that world, um, you know, I'm printing to a printer object that's spitting out the printer next to me, um, and I'm picking up that job. We run the meter on the device because only one department or cost center is using that device and they just get charged back. In that scenario, you probably don't have secure pull printing. You probably don't have enhanced device security other than what comes from the manufacturer out of the box. Um, most of the time you don't have user-based analytics. So you can't break out who printed what to the device um, and say, hey, you know, Rich did a thousand pages and Ben only did one because he's more environmentally conscious and doesn't need to print as much. Um, but what happens here is optimization is really hard to achieve because you're, you're not trying to curtail the waste that's being spit, spit out of the printers. You don't have enhanced device security, productivity. I'm printing to that one printer. 
if that printer goes down, maybe I got to put a help desk support ticket in to say, ah, my printer's down and I don't know how to print to the other one in my environment. So you get more help desk tickets. And then lastly, you know, you're probably not getting the financial savings that would be available if you had a managed environment. So that area is typically not optimized. A lot of times extending Uniprint into those areas either is not uh, justified from a cost perspective maybe it's too much lift or level of effort to go deploy Uniprint to all of that. Um, and maybe it's just not worth the level of effort to go get it done. So in that environment, you could introduce a lightweight true cloud solution like Beacon, um, where you're gonna have a fleet manager component to show you what's happening with the devices. You're gonna have an analytics component on your end users to say, who's printing what, what users use the machine, and can I charge uh, activity back appropriately? Yes, you could. And then with Beacon, you could also introduce, or cloud-based service, secure pull printing um, in, in, in a way that's you know, much faster and easier to deploy than what typically has been Uniprint, right? If I see a device pop into Beacon, I can click an internet button to secure the device, and it goes and self-installs and configures, and I'm done. Um, it's much more fast and seamless. So. The reason we take you through that is if we look at the current state um, in most of the accounts that you know we have footprint or presence in today, it looks a little bit like this. You have your Uniprint instance serving predominantly your public programs and sometimes some of the private programs, but then most of your private program is unmanaged. Um, you probably have print servers to support that direct print workflow, and this is typically how we see things configured. Um, now, what happens here when we optimize with the cloud and we kind of go and put a cloud-based service and, and manage that program instead of have it unmanaged, we have the opportunity to eliminate the print servers that were there supporting that direct print environment. So if we're able to eliminate all that infrastructure, we've got a couple different plays here. One is going to be cloud-only solution. Migrate away from Uniprint, migrate fully to Beacon, all users, public programs, private programs, transient users. The caveat here is if you go this route, um, you have to eliminate chargeback, pay for print, multi-tier chargeback. If you can do that, fabulous. You can move to a cloud service like Beacon immediately. Um, if you can't do that, then you know, you're not going to be able to move to Beacon right away. And then what we recommend there is more of a scenario like this, where I'm going to have my Uniprint instance. It's going to serve the public programs because I need paper print, because I need chargeback. You can keep that local within your firewall. You can put that private hosted in the cloud, but then you add a cloud service like Beacon to capture um, and have a print management solution in place for what was typically those private program areas. And if we do it like this, Uniprint has a connector to Beacon to say everything that I've collected from a data perspective in Uniprint can be put into Beacon. So you have a central repository for the data coming out of both Uniprint and Beacon in one real-time web-based dashboard. So this is where we see in the hybrid world why folks would introduce Beacon in addition to Uniprint. Um, the data that Beacon provides in that quote unquote unmanaged environment can also show you what's possible as far as cost savings are concerned. So a lot of times this is tough for higher education organizations that are decentralized, you know, um, departments have their own budgets, they do their own thing, really tough to get a comprehensive program going in that. We've seen a lot of shift in higher ed towards shared services or pulling budgets all under one umbrella. And in that environment, Beacon can expose what's happening and going on to say, hey, it, it's worth the level of effort to go do some print management here, or maybe it's not. For folks that are moving to the cloud or trying to go campus-wide with their solutions, what we're looking to do is deliver you know, services to all end users in a sustainable and affordable way, um, eliminate some of the print infrastructure. So this may be tied to cloud migration strategies or as-a-service strategies. And when we say as-a-service, Think of something like Netflix, for example. For Netflix, you give it your, your username and password and credit card, and you log in on your TV, and you've got everything under the sun. You really had to do nothing. Um, in a cloud-provided print management service, it's basically the same thing. I give my users an internet connection to Beacon. I give my devices an internet view to Beacon, and now I can go file print securely. So that's kind of the idea, and what that allows you to do is eliminate all that infrastructure that you have supporting print today. 
Um, you can secure the print process or the print path end to end, so from submission to retrieval. And then the biggest goal here, you know, is re reducing costs and continual optimization within your environment all the time. For folks that do make it to the cloud, and what we've just described is, you know, if you have this hybrid environment, you're going to have, you're either going to be here with your Uniprint in option number one, or here with your Uniprint in option number two, and then. If you introduce Beacon, you know, this is where the magic happens is what we say, because everything on the left-hand side, you have now given that responsibility to someone else. That becomes Pharos's burden instead of yours. And what happens is hopefully the time and the energy that you spent managing all of that and the money and the cost um, it, it is saved in the organization and you can better allocate all of that towards something else. Rich, before we move to TrueCloud, I'll pause there. Is there anything you want to add talking about hybrid scenario? I, I know we're going to get into get into that a little bit more, so I'm going to interject as we as we get into that. Okay. So nothing. Moment. Sounds good. So now, when we talk about true cloud technology, um, this is Beacon. Um, so we've we've gone along the path here, and what we've now done is said, hey, we, we don't want any infrastructure. We don't want any print servers, application servers, nothing. Um, and, and we have some customers who are here today, right? We want everything all up, all in, in the cloud. Uh, this is where Pharaoh's Beacon is today. Again, if you need pay for print or multi-tiered complex chargeback, Beacon is not gonna provide that out of the box at the moment. So we'll need to run Uniprint in some kind of capacity to support that. So as folks move to true cloud, why are they doing it? Um, what are the benefits? When we look at, at cloud applications, you know, we've heard some schools say, mm, you know, I don't really have a cloud initiative. I don't have a cloud strategy, but they have a lot of cloud applications running their environment. So when we look at cloud storage, you know, the top five out there are OneDrive and Dropbox and Google Drive, um, Box and Amazon Cloud Services. These are all full cloud technologies. When we look at CRMs, and these may be not as prevalent in higher education, like Salesforce and NetSuite and HubSpot, these are full cloud services. When we look at you know, uh, directory services or office productivity, things like Office 365 or G Suite, these are full cloud solutions and these are uh, you know, pretty predominant in higher education today. And then when we talk about collaboration tools like this GoToWebinar we're on right now, or GoToMeeting or you know, the emergence of Zoom through COVID, uh, we use Teams predominantly for our internal communications at Pharos. These are all full cloud services as well. So most organizations are utilizing as a service providers without maybe even realizing that they're doing it or have a, a strategy or an end game around cloud migration and, and as a service. So companies are moving to the cloud because of the flexibility and scalability. I don't have to purchase and own something, right? I can scale up and down how much or how little of a service I have on a subscription basis. So it's ever evolving and changing. It allows me to reduce infrastructure. The ease and speed of deployment with as a service or cloud tools is far superior to running on-premise solutions. Um, your applications remain current because the service is going to auto update in the background rather than you having to say, okay, what version's coming? Can I schedule an outage or downtime? Can I get a rich post on the phone to help me with either a migration from one OS to another OS or a complete rebuild and migration of my legacy data? All of that kind of effort goes away. And then the high availability and disaster recovery available in the cloud is probably far superior than anything any of us could build on our own. And then the real goal is people are going to reduce costs and improve security. Um, with the impact of COVID, folks working from home, um, security I think is top on everybody's mind. And with the print paths that are deployed through cloud technology, um, they're very, very secure. And we actually can improve the security around the devices and the end users and the content. In that regard, when we look at those unmanaged areas in higher education, you know, I can tell you when, when it's not um, a travel restricted world, when Rich and I actually get it to get out on the road and come visit all of you, I can tell you I've been in several, you know, admissions offices where there's PII that is printed and just laying on the paper tray. Those areas are typically unmanaged. Uh, we see a lot of PII laying around on paper trays. So whether you're in Uniprint or Beacon, um, improving security in this stage and age is always something we should be focusing on. And then, you know, you mitigate your risk by shifting things to the cloud. You're, you're putting the burden on somebody else to provide that service and make sure that it's up and running and available all the time and that it's a pleasurable user experience for the people 
people that you're providing the service to. So again, when we look at True Cloud Beacon, we're giving users an internet connected path up to Beacon, and then we're giving devices internet connectivity to Beacon as well. And really, everything from a print perspective flows as a service through Beacon in the cloud. We do have customers today who, you know, whether they're using Beacon as an add-on to Uniprint for data analytics and reporting, um, whether they have the hybrid environment running where I've got Uniprint and then I've got Beacon and both of them are offering some kind of secure printing. We have customers doing that. And then we have some customers who have taken a leap and said, you know what, I can go full cloud. I can, I can review my business models to say, do I really need to do pay for printing as it stands today? Um, can I look at doing away with that? We've had a lot of discussions with higher education institutions with, with COVID going on, um, you know, and, and students not prevalent on campus, a lot of people still working from home, not sure when we're gonna reopen. We all wanna see those students come back, but is this an opportunity to say, I may be able to reevaluate the business model here or how we're charging students and say, are there benefits to looking at something different? Do the, the benefits justify you know, what I have to overcome to put a new process or a new program in place? Some folks say there's no way we can add on a technology fee, for example. So if you say, well, if I get rid of quotas and paper print, what do I do? Because um, we don't want an unmanaged environment for the students. We don't want them to print 4 million pages without you know, any oversight. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can tackle that. So when we look at that, if you were to eliminate something like that, one, you know, Beacon's going to track all the activity. So you could communicate a strategy to say, hey, you know, you've got a thousand pages or so. Um, we're not going to track that for you, give you your quota. But if you surpass that, you know, we're going to track everything that you've done past that. And we're going to add it to your bill at the end of a time bound period. Um, that may be one way to do it. Some schools have said, we're just going to do a flat technology fee. Um, across the board for all students and then offer print as a service through that technology fee and not worry about tracking every page and the cost associated that comes out. Uh, we don't wanna be in the business of doing an advanced account and then debiting every single transaction that comes through. Um, so there are some options. When we look at, um, and at this point, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Lindsay. We've got our first polling question that has come up. Um, and Lindsay, I will turn it over to you. Okay. Just getting it launched. Okay, so what is important in a full cloud solution for you? And this is a, um, you can select more than one. So quotas, pay for print, advanced, complex departmental chargeback, or integrations and gateways. So I'll just give, give everybody a couple seconds here. I can already see folks are putting in their answers. Yeah, so in just the, the uh, integrations and gateways is, you know, customization, scripting, connections to uh, external billing systems like Seaboard and things like that. These are some things that, um, you know, we're looking on putting putting into into Beacon as, as we can and, and looking for, you know, customer participation in, you know, what's important to put in next. So we can actually, you know, be there when customers are, are ready to make the jump to cloud, um, we'll be there for you with what you need. So I closed the poll and I am sharing the results with everybody. Yeah, and I, this is what I expected to see. Um, and you know, a, a bunch of questions came up as well around um, charging to Seaboard or um, giving a specific quota ahead of time or stopping users when they run out of funds and those kinds of things. And um, like we did discuss, you know, in the other webinar, we go into a little bit more detail on some of that stuff um, to specifically state that. But really, you do want to have a conversation with your either account manager or inside sales rep to, to look into some of these things because uh, – Paying for printing is still possible, and uh, Ben, I don't think you have that slide uh, that talks about, you know, like an arrears is maybe a solution, arrears where you charge back at the end of the month in, or at the end of the semester, as opposed to um, having the money on account in advance. And so there's some things that can be done, or another one was um, utilizing the technology fee to, to take the uh, pay for print requirement 
uh, out of this out of the scenario because the amount of savings in both administrative effort, um, IT support, uh, as well as the hardware and the software and the, and the dollars involved in all of that, um, security, all of those things that you saw in the um, the slide with the juggling fire guy, um, you know, they're all so important and so useful that it's, it's worth taking a look at potentially changing some of the workflows that you may have in your environment today and then looking into that because there's just so much to be saved there. And it's not only money, although money is usually enough, but it's not only money. That's right. That's Great. Brandon. Thanks, Rich. So the last part that we'll get into on the webinar today is futures. And what does the future of, you know, Beacon or Uniprint hold? Uh, we're not going to get too much into the roadmap, but what we're talking about in futures is, you know, if we brought all of the capabilities or some of the capabilities over into Beacon, and if we go back to the slides that we had reviewed before, when we talk about this public program where we have quotas or pay for print or multi-tier chargeback, we've got transient users, can we, can we move that over to a full cloud service as well, like Beacon? So, you know, what we're doing today is looking at what does it take to get some of the core competencies of Uniprint into our Beacon cloud product. Um, if we go down that direction, what are the feature sets that we should put in there first and foremost? Um, and, and how do we transition Uniprint into a full cloud solution that would be, you know, similar to an experience of what you have in, in Uniprint today? So this is, this is the path that we're headed down. We're still doing a little bit of investigative research to see what we pull into the, the Beacon product first. Where do we go from here? How quickly can we make it available? And that will lead us to our second polling question. Um, and I'll switch this over here. So Lindsay, if you wanna take your polling question. Yep, I just launched it. So yep. if you... If you had Beacon today, what would your solution look like? I wouldn't have to charge students via quotes, pay for print, quotas, pay for print. I could charge students a technology fee for printing. I could charge students for use in arrears, or I need to have quotas pay for print. I'm a little sad I don't get to vote. <laughs> Just give everybody a couple more seconds. I can, I see a one that's taken the lead here. Okay, three. Yeah, two. a lot of these two are not totally cut and dry. Uh, really, you know, talk with someone. If there's an initiative to, to drive forward, definitely talk with someone because the 75% of you that say must have quotas pay for print, there, there are ways we can get around some of that stuff, sometimes not, sometimes yes. Um, and we are looking at putting something like that into Beacon uh, as we move it forward. Good answers, thank you. Yeah, great. So we'll revisit kind of what we reviewed today very, very briefly here. Um, and again, what we reviewed is a traditional server architecture for on-premise Uniprint, whether you're on physical servers or virtualized servers. Um, and I think we have a lot of folks there at this point in time. Um, a, a private hosted cloud environment where we're still utilizing the Uniprint core software. We're just lifting and shifting where it resides, um, what components go into that private hosted environment and which ones don't. Um, and then we reviewed what true cloud looks like, which is Pharos Beacon. And we also reviewed the hybrid environment where you're running, you know, both products, Uniprint and Beacon in tandem. So again, you know, no matter where you are on this path and, and where you think you're headed, um, Pharos has a product set in line to support you. We are committed to higher education and developing products that fit the need of, you know, both today and tomorrow for the, the end users that you all must serve. And whether you're going to be, you know, on-prem for the next five years or you want to get to cloud tomorrow, uh, we can kind of meet you wherever you need to be along this path. And 
if any of this, you know, wants to be discussed or reviewed, the whole team here is available to talk about, you know, what it would mean to change some of this. I think we're happy to review current architectures and say, hey, is there a better way to do it or, or a more fiduciary responsible way to do it? We can investigate that. And that'll lead us to our last polling question, because I think as we look to say, how fast do we want to get paper print into full cloud? We kind of want to know where everybody's headed and, and where they're going to be. So the last polling question that we have is centered around that. Okay, I just made it active. So as a Uniprint user, where would you like to see yourself in one to three years? On-premises only, private hosted, private hosted but managed externally by someone else, full public cloud, or full public cloud with student pay for print features? I have a hunch where this one's going. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, one, one thing as they're voting there, Ben, I don't think that um, was maybe stressed enough is that just like you saw um, the going up the ramp, right, from on-premises to cloud and the options and opportunities uh, and the ways in which we can lay things out, there's a creativity within Pharos um, to, to answering those questions around the environment and what's needed that can also be done when you add Beacon to Uniprint in different ways. And you showed in the one slide how you can add it, you know, for just that back office and staff or for just the unmanaged environment. And you can make those big wins right there. Um, and you can have that playing alongside Uniprint on premises, hybrid posted, or cloud hosted. So, like, there's just so much creativity and so much customization with the Uniprint product, and it's not going anywhere. Um, Beacon is not replacing Uniprint. Um, we are looking to put the features of Uniprint in Beacon, but it's not a replacement um, unless it's a fit for a replacement for you. You'd think every polling question was like a chance for me to rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at this point, you know, we're, we're at the conclusion of what we've, uh, the material that we put together to share today. Um, Lindsay, I believe we have a few minutes left to open it up to some questions here. And so with that, I'll turn things back over to you. Um, and, you know, um, Rich and I are here, and uh, we've also have some other folks here on the line who can help answer some of these questions. Yeah. So when everybody registered, we did have a section in the form where you could put in questions and comments ahead of time. So a question that um, did come in were, are there going to be any updates with improved reporting for Pharaoh's reports for those who host Uniprint on site? And are there any plans for new reports related to mobile print? So let me start on that one. Um, number one is when you add the Uniprint connector, uh, which is a piece of beacon to an existing Uniprint environment, you get all of the reports and all of the analytics that that's coming with beacon. Um, and it's, it's tremendous. It's amazing. Um, you can actually watch some of the demos that we've done of print analytics um, and, and, and fleet reporting as well in beacon all on our YouTube channel. So that's, that's step one. And then uh, with regards to mobile printing, I think I'd like to understand you know, maybe offline, what specific reports are, are more interesting or more um, are wanted by our end customers to potentially give to the product manager to, uh, to look into adding? Because uh, we did add a few mobile print reports already to, uh, to Uniprint 9.0 R2, I think. Um, and they're there already for you. So, yeah, let us know what more specifically you're looking for and, and we can get that. But... Beacon and the Uniprint connector are a big win for every Uniprint customer. So Ben and Rich, um, we have had quite a few questions getting typed into the panel. So I'm just gonna give you guys a minute to look through those while I just mentioned the two upcoming webinars. Okay. Th I know everybody loves hearing you guys talk, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a minute. Um, so I did include hyperlinks in the chat area with two webinars that we have coming up. 
On October 22nd, Jeff Geller, a senior support engineer, and myself will be giving a tour of our new community that was integrated with our FARO support ticketing system. So if you engage with support or need documentation or just enjoy interacting with other customers and partners through discussion forums, you should join this webinar just to learn how to navigate the new site. And then on November 5th, Anna Campbell, our technical product manager for Beacon, will demo our new Ferro's Chrome print extension and how easy it is to secure printing for Chromebook users. Um, and that works also with Uniprint as well. So I encourage um, everyone to click those links and register for those upcoming events. And I'm gonna hand it back to Ben and Rich these last couple of minutes to um, take care of a couple of the questions that they have come in. So I, I see a question about um, Uniprint support and, and how long it will last. Um, so Uniprint 9.2 is already in the works um, for release in 2021. So our developers and our team, our product management team and everybody are working with existing legacy on-premises Uniprint and, and working on updating that and adding features and improving security and robustness, et cetera, on that product. And our product roadmaps usually show that uh, mature support and, and that kind of thing go for like two or three years beyond that, typically. Um, you can actually find that in our community. And so if we're not releasing a product for, until next year, and then two or three more years on top of that, you're talking you know, five years into the future that Uniprint is uh, still available and still working fine for you. Ben, did you see any that were looked interesting to answer? Well, I think most of them are interesting, Rich. I think uh, if we had time, I'd love to talk to every single one of them on here. There, there are a couple, um, some easy ones. Um, one is, um, can we have the slideware from today? Can you guys make the deck available? Um, and I think the answer there is yes. We can we can share the slide content. So if that's something that's helpful, um, you know, to help describe things to folks in your organization, we can we can definitely do that. I've seen a lot of questions around um, availability of the touchless release um, in Uniprint. And I think that it's been answered in the chat to those who, who had asked it. But um, you know, from, from a Uniprint perspective, the, the product is ready to go for touchless release, that QR release. Um, we are waiting right now to have the apps released by the vendors. So we need Apple to release it to the iStore we need Google to release it to Google Play. We anticipate that happening very soon. We've been through you know, the process of, of having those apps submitted and reviewed and approved, and we're just waiting for final launch. Um, that is a timeline that's typically, you know, we're at the mercy of those vendors right now to see how fast they can get them into their stores. Uh, we anticipate it being very soon though. So those are a couple quick ones that I saw, Rich. Do you see any more? We got about two minutes left here. Yeah, I see one that says, you know, how can I hook up my back office, you know, with direct printing and still do student pay for print and utilize the Uniprint connector, perhaps, to get data out of the whole system. And and uh, that's exactly how it would work, is that data would be available, the Uniprint connector would populate all that up to the cloud, and then all of the capability within the print analytics. And again, check out our YouTube page uh, with, with some of the demos that have been done you'll be able to see right there, you know, what the different analytics capabilities are right built into Beacon, uh, as well as there's Beacon webinars as well that we're doing every once in a while also. Uh, there's another question that talks about, you know, connecting multifunction devices, which again, historically has been an on-premises, um, a lot of effort kind of activity to accomplish. And on the multifunction devices that work with Beacon, um, today it's already HP, Ricoh, and KM and we're adding Canon and Xerox uh, in the very near term. They're already down for certification. Um, so those, you just, it's basically you go on the web interface and say secure my printer in a particular way, you know, with the IMFP or with a card swipe. And uh, we, the software is pushed. So the whole communication is all HTTPS secure with, uh, with strong certificates. And it really is a cloud solution that with, you know, um, very little or no on-premises components at all. I see a lot of uh, questions about, you know, when can we get started or, or uh, 
how do I get the connector? How do I, you know, get this going? So that we're going to have a lot of follow up, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yep. So related to that, Rich, since we have, um, we're in our final minute, um, I do want to thank everyone who joined us for today. And related to what Rich just said about follow up, um, we will be reaching out to everyone with a link to the recording and answering any remaining questions that have been asked here that didn't get a response live. And if you have questions or comments that you think of later, please don't hesitate to reply to our email when we share those links with you um, or reach out to Yafaro's contact and we'll help get you the answers you need. Um, and I know Rich also mentioned our YouTube channel. We do have a ton of content on there. I know last year we posted maybe two videos, so it wasn't very active, but this year we're close to 40 videos where we're doing some short demos, posting all the recordings to our events. So you'll definitely want to check that area out for additional content and how-to videos. Um, so we hope to see you at upcoming events and stay healthy and safe. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks,